Um, the first, and frankly, my, my biggest priority for the upcoming session is the protection um, that I think is lacking for victims of crime. Um, and specifically protection, not from the harm that they've already endured by criminal defendants, but by the harm that's inflicted upon them by the criminal justice system here in New Mexico. Um, and so the best way, I think, to understand one of the things that we're trying to address is to, is to hear from some of those victims themselves. Uh, and some may recall, we actually advanced this as a possible piece of legislation last year, last October, but heading into a, a short session, which is confined to the budget, it simply just didn't, didn't get a hearing, didn't get taken up. We're really gonna make a strong push on this. And it's focused primarily on what victims have to go through in our criminal justice system that frankly, they don't have to go through in almost any other. So let me play this video and it'll give you a sense of what I'm talking about. And the Bernalillo County, County District, 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 Attorney, District says, Attorney says New Mexico is one of the only states where sexually abused children have to endure more pain because of how they're questioned during investigations. News 13's Rebecca Atkins is live in the newsplex with the DA's plea to change the law. Rebecca. Well, Jessica, several victims came forward today showing their faces and telling their stories in hopes that people in charge of making the laws in our state will hear them. I watched everything about the experience tear her down mentally, physically. Today, a mother spoke for her daughter, kidnapped by an accused sexual predator in 2017 at just 12 years old. A four-year-old doesn't do anything to deserve a, a, a brutal death. The family of Rebecca Sanchez, murdered by her father and stepmother, stood by in support, along with this young woman who braved a crowd of strangers to tell her story. I was sexually molested when I was 11. It's been seven years now, I'm 19 years old. Ashley Vargas is one of many victims who stood by Bernalillo County District Attorney Raul Torres today, asking New Mexico to change the way children of sexual abuse and violent crimes are questioned during investigations. Just inflicting so many painful questions over and over, you basically just don't want to talk no more. DA Torres played actual recordings, questions asked of children during interviews. Do you know what happens to um, a man when he gets sexually aroused? Vargas says one of those questions vividly stands out in her memory. They were asking me what I wore and I told them I was wearing like tights and like a t-shirt and they asked me why I was wearing tights to bed. They were asking 11 year olds why they made it seem like it was my fault. Torres has drafted legislation to put a stop to this line of questioning. There is um, a means of securing justice for people, for providing due process for people without doing harm. The bill would prevent defense attorneys and investigators from interrogating children and developmentally delayed adults before trial. I absolutely urge the leaders in Santa Fe to listen to victims to hear them and to understand that we are failing them. The DA Torres says the drafted bill has been submitted to the governor and he is speaking with lawmakers on both sides of the aisle to find a sponsor. Jess. All right, thank you, Rebecca. The New Mexico Public Defender's Office responded to the proposal, calling it a misguided effort to protect people and would actually cause more trauma to victims. To read their full statement, we've posted it on krqe.com. Um, you know, the, the one thing that I can tell you is that, um, not just as a prosecutor, but as a father, it is, um, unconscionable to me that the criminal justice system in this state would permit, um, the infliction of this kind of trauma and this kind of harm on victims, especially minors, and um, those with developmental disabilities to have to endure this kind of treatment just to seek justice. Uh, as a federal prosecutor, I can tell you unequivocally that this is not normal. It is not constitutionally uh, required, nor is it a feature, frankly, of the vast majority of states um, in this country. If, if there was a similar situation 
where a child in Indian country was the victim of sexual assault, they would never be required to sit in a pretrial witness interview, which is usually the second or third time they have to recount the details of this kind of trauma um, to, uh, in order just to prepare to go to trial. Um, a child in Indian country simply has an unequivocal right to uh, be confronted um, by defense counsel in open court. And when that happens, as you can imagine, in the presence of a jury and in the presence of a judge, those investigators and defense attorneys uh, usually keep their um, conduct um, to uh, within a more reasonable bound um, or frame of what is acceptable. Um, but these, these highly traumatic pretrial witness interviews are usually the turning point for a number of victims, uh, not only children, but adult victims of sexual assault. And they leave the room and they say, we don't want any part of this. Um, and so we have a huge drop off rate in pursuing some of these crimes precisely because it's a way for um, the s defense attorneys to take advantage of the system and scare and intimidate victims um, from having to go through this. That has to change. So the, the package of legislation that we're proposing includes the admissibility of what's called a safe house interview. It's a standard practice in lots of different uh, jurisdictions around the country. Um, a protection, as I mentioned before, a prohibition, a flat prohibition of pretrial witness interviews uh, for children or adults with developmental disabilities. Um, and strict limitations on how that could be done um, in rare circumstances with adults. Um, we also have a problem in New Mexico where we routinely and under the current rules are required to disclose personal identifying information of victims. So if, if you or one of your loved ones of us a victim of crime and your uh, date of birth, phone number, um, address and other information was included in a police report. If we try to redact that information, we are currently sanctioned by the court. Um, and we've had instances where that information will not only be delivered to defense counsel, but will be delivered to a criminal defendant himself while they're in custody, while they're in jail. Um, it is not, again, something that is standard practice in other parts of the country. Um, and the last piece is to allow victims and others, specifically children, uh, to participate in the judicial process by remote video. Uh, that would also reduce the amount of harm and trauma that's uh, incurred by, by these um, brave um, but very fragile young people as they go through the process.